One player who will be heading into his first international tournament is Arsenal's Bukayo Saka. Gareth Southgate said that Saka's inclusion is based on his incredible form with Arsenal this season. Well, firstly, he's performed exceptionally well for us. Um, he's performed well in a team that's had a difficult season. Sometimes young players can go into teams that are playing well and flourish. He's gone into a team that have had a tough season and really played with character as well as skill. Um, so again, we saw when he had to come on in Belgium, real personality in his performance. And as you rightly say, his, his adaptability, the fact he can play probably four or five different positions is a real plus for us. So one man who can be credited perhaps for Saka's rise to stardom is the Arsenal legend and former head of youth development for the Gunners, Liam Brady, someone you know very well, Cass. Yeah. Very yeah. pleased to say that Liam joins us now. Morning to you, Liam. How are you? Morning, Morning Liam. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. What wonderful news uh, about Bakayo Saka. Um, from when you were with him, could you always tell that there was something special in him? Well, I have to admit, Natalie, that uh, I didn't have a lot to do with Bakayo. It was the system that was set up to bring these young boys in at a very early age that we had in place. And, you know, he, he's been at the club since he was seven years of age. Mm. Now, I retired from uh, uh, my job as academy manager five, four or five years ago. So uh, Bakayo would have been about 12 then. And... Uh, he he was making inroads. He was doing very well. I used to go back to the academy to watch tournaments and things like that. And he was uh, he was certainly one of the players that stood out uh, at 13 and 14. And I'm delighted to see him go on and uh, and and fulfil his potential. Liam, um, as a director of the academy, did you feel that? This should have happened a little bit more at Arsenal because you've had some incredible talents over the years that maybe didn't get the opportunity. Because the the brightest thing about Arsenal now is Emil Smith Rowe, Saka, you know, the youngsters coming through. Well, I don't really uh, th think that's fair, Tony. Uh, I, I would have said that, uh, you know, if, if Arsene Wenger, who I spent most of the time as academy manager with him, mm. Uh, if he thought a player had the ability, you know, he would invariably give him uh, the, the chance to prove it, you know. If you remember the, the amount of games these youngsters played in the League Cup, and uh, he used that as a competition to really see if they could do it or not. So I, I don't have any complaints about um, the players that, uh, that maybe didn't make it at the club but on, went on to make it somewhere else. Mm. I think that's just natural at a big club. And you must remember how good the Arsenal first team was <laughs> all those years back. You know, yeah. It was very, very difficult for a young player to break into that team. As it is for all of the big clubs, yeah. it's a really valid point, Liam. The, the standard, the benchmark is incredibly high. Yeah, when well, you look at Declan Rice, you know, Declan Rice is, is, a, is a really top player now, but Chelsea made the decision to let him go when he was 12 years of age and he went over to West Ham and now look at him, you know, Chelsea. Uh, there was even talk that they wanted to buy him back. You know, it can happen. Uh, uh, you know, these kids, it's very, it's very difficult to be absolutely 100% right about who you think is going to go on and do it or not. But to go back to Bukayo, he's, uh, he's always been a, a, a very humble lad and he's always wanted to learn and he thinks he's had great support from... Uh, his family, uh, and he, he was always on time for training. He was always committed to give a hundred percent in 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 everything he did, and he's paying. He, he, he's getting the rewards for it now. Now it looks as if he's probably one of the last decisions that Gareth Southgate had to make, but it could be a very important one because I have a feeling if he is to get. A chance in these Euros, he'll 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 give the manager something to think about. You know, it might be that his first uh, uh, appearance at the Euros will be as a substitute or something like that. But he's the kind of kid that can come on and for 20 minutes and really make an impact, and then perhaps make that position his own for the rest of the tournament. Mm. Uh, I, that wouldn't surprise me if it happened. You know. Uh, in terms of Arsenal's season, it's been quite exciting for some of the young talent that we've had to see with. 
Saka and also Emil Smith Rowe, for example, um, which in some ways gives some Arsenal fans a bit of hope for the future. But in terms of the, the season overall, they finished six points off the top four. Liam, 25 points off Manchester City. From what you've seen of Arsenal of late, what on earth can they do to get themselves back into being one of those at least top four sides? Well, you're right when you say that the the, the youngsters uh, have been the success story at Arsenal uh, over the last couple of seasons. Uh, you'd have to say, particularly this season with Smith Rowe and Saka, and you know you look at what Willock, uh, Joe Willock mm-hmm. did at Newcastle as well. So uh, I, I would say that's that's the plus side of it. I think we have to get our recruitment right. You know, when we spend money, and we've spent lots and lots of money, uh, and it hasn't really been spent well, mm. and. Uh, you know, Arteta has to get a grip on that and, and the players he brings in have really got to uh, show that they can uh, push the club forward and challenge for that top four. Mm. Well, on a brighter note, Liam, I will see you on Friday playing golf. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope I'm not playing against you, Cass, I know you're a bandit and I know... Uh, He's taken my money so I was, Oh, he's a bandit, is he? Oh, you didn't no, mention I'm that, not. did no, you? So, he takes so, so much money off me on the golf course, I stopped playing him. Oh, well, I, I feel like you might have to go with your pockets full then, <laughs> just in case. Um, Liam, it's been great to talk to you. Thank Cheers, you. Liam. Cheers, Liam. Bye-bye. 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 Fantastic. That'll be interesting on Friday. You'll have yeah, to let no, us know look, on and Saturday. I, I, t- I remind Thank people you. all the time of how good a player Liam Brady was because he left England, uh, Arsenal, in 80, 1980 and joined Juve which were the European giant at that time. And Italian football was at the very top of the tree in Europe. Oh, and Liam went there and had two, two to nearly three years there at uh, Juve and he was replaced. I think, I think I'd, I would probably have to ask him this on Friday. I think he won Player of the Year for Juve in 82 and they let him go. Oh. And they brought in Michel Platini. Oh. <laughs> Honestly. Oh. Uh, yeah, but even so, I mean, Liam was a top player. But strange yeah. to, to lose your player of the season. Well, and he was fantastic for them. Respect. He really, yeah. really played well. And Arsenal fans will tell you, that certainly of that era, Liam Brady was one of the greats. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.